I'm Miss Mallory from the Quinan Street Project, here to bring you drama. Um, you will have to excuse some of the noise in the background. I'm doing laundry and my laundry is right there, so <laughs> I'm doing laundry. Excuse the sounds. Um, today we are going to work on emotions, feelings, and improvisation. But before we do that, let's go ahead and check in like we normally would every class. And I want to ask you how you're feeling. So give me one word that describes how you're feeling and uh, a gesture that might match it. So for example, right now I am feeling silly because I'm doing laundry and recording my video. Um, so right now I'm feeling silly. <laughs> Your turn. good. And remember, checking in uh, with how you're feeling is really important at the beginning and end of everything, um, just so that you can figure out what it is that you can do, um, ways that you can match or make yourself feel better. Um, so checking in is always a good thing. Let's see. And before we go into today's lesson, we are going to review what we learned last time um, and to review what we already know from the last few weeks, which is, first of all, what is drama? If you know the answer, go ahead and say it out loud. What is drama? That's right. Drama is telling a story. And how do we tell these stories, um, these movies, you know, TV shows, these plays, these performances, dances, anything? We have three tools that help us tell our stories. The three tools of an actor, what are they? You have them on you already. Cool. So it's this, this, and this. So the three tools of an actor are your body, your voice, and your imagination. Um, and let's see, what else did we learn? We learned Tableau, which is a frozen picture pantomime, which is a moving picture. Um, and we also learned last time what dialogue and narrative are. What is dialogue? Right, so dialogue is conversation between two or more people. Um, a narrative, what is narrative? That's right, narrative is a person telling the story. It's a person's account of a story. Um, also, we learned how to use our voice. How do we use our voice? That's right, so the voice um, helps determine what a character sounds like. It, helps determine their mood, their feelings, their emotions. Um, and that is a little bit more of what we're going to go over today. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and warm up. First off, I want you to reach above your heads. Act like there's candy in the ceiling. So reach, reach your hands up above your head. You can even act like you're climbing rope. Now, wiggle your fingers. Drop your fingers, drop your wrists, drop your elbows, and then drop your shoulders. Now, take a crayon. This is a crayon in my head. Put it on top of your head like this and draw some circles with your head, with that crayon onto the ceiling. Draw four circles. Now do it the other way four times. Very slowly. Now, I want you to take that crayon, take it off of your head, break it in half, and stick each half on your shoulders. Here and one here. Now, draw circles on both sides of the room with the crayons on your shoulders. Let's do four backwards. One two, three, and four. Now four forwards. One, two, three, and four. Just heard some bones cracking. <laughs> okay, now 
take these crayons, put them back together, just put it away for now, set it to the side. Now, I want you to give me a superhero chest. So what does a superhero chest look like? Um, for me, a superhero chest is nice and big and proud and powerful. So let's do superhero chest. Now let's do a villain chest. Villain kind of just gets small and tiny and evil, right? Now let's go back to superhero chest. Big and proud and out. And then villain chest. And small. Shrink. Now superhero chest again. Now villain chest. Superhero chest. Now villain chest. Oh, okay. Good job. Now, I want you to create a ball of energy in between your hands like this. So clap your hands, use your hands. Now clap them together and create a warm ball of energy until it becomes nice and warm. Okay, now wake up your body with this ball of energy. Start off with your head, back of your head, your face your arms, shoulders, let's go to your chest, go like this, ah, uh, go to your belly, and your back, and your hips, and your thighs, now your legs, and your calves, even to your feet, okay, now, I want you to warm up your face. So make your face nice and big like this. Eyes big, mouth big, now small. Big, now small. Two more times. Big, now small. Big, and small. Now, we need to warm up our voices and our mouth. So, first you're gonna blow your lips out like a horse, but don't make any sound and don't make any vibrations with your mouth. You just go like this. Now you can play with sound and vibrating your lips. Play with some sound. Let's go ahead and warm up our voices and this tool here, our face, our body, our mouths. We're going to do this by going through the alphabet. So with every letter that you say, don't just say A. I want you to use your entire face to do the alphabet. So if I say A, it's A. So make sure to use your cheeks and your lips and your nose and your eyes to do the alphabet. We're gonna start at the beginning. Ready? A B C D E F G H I J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, Y and Z. So hopefully your cheeks are all warmed up and loosened now. Now let's get into some tongue twisters. 
I have a couple for you. If you know them on your own, you can do your own, but I'll start off with a couple. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Now say it again with me. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. I say it a little bit faster. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. <laughs> you know you need unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. You know you need unique New York. Now let's try this next one. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. You might know this one already. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Let's do it a little bit faster. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? A little bit faster. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. So Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? And one more. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood, but the little black bug bleeds blue. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood, but the little black bug bleeds blue. The big black bug bleeds blue black blood but the little black bug bleeds blue a little bit faster the big black bug bleeds blue black blood but the little black bug bleeds blue oh my gosh good job give yourselves a round of applause okay so let's go ahead and talk about feelings and emotions um there are different feelings that you can have uh, you know it's a reason why we check in in the beginning of class we want to know how you're feeling um, so some feelings that you could have is are sad angry happy lonely shy um, embarrassed hungry sleepy ecstatic so that's another word for excited um, excited um, uh, what's another one? Energetic, um, gross, dirty, playful. Those are all words um, that you can use to describe how you're feeling and emotions that you're feeling. Um, if we were in class, uh, there is a really fun activity and game that we would be doing. And I'll explain it a little bit, not to confuse you, but in case you wanna play this at home, um, it's called emotional taxi and it's really fun. So you would put your chairs as if there were four people sitting in a car. So two people in the front and then two people in the back. And each person who's not the driver represents a emotion or feeling so the person for example in the passenger seat would be happy the person in the one person in the back would be angry and the other person would be sad now the person who was driving the car or in the driver's seat would be very moldable so they could be any of the other emotions that the other people in the car are so um, you would drive up the, the person who's in the driver's seat would drive up um, the first person gets in the car, um, say for example, if that person is supposed to be happy, then the taxi driver would say to the, that person, where are you headed? And then the person would tell them in a happy voice and say, um, Puerto Rico. And then the um, driver, they would act like they're driving, then they would pick up another person if the person who's angry um, when they come in, the driver says to them in an angry voice, where are we going? And then the person would answer in an angry voice and he'd say, the mall. And um, then they would drive and then pick up the last person and the last person is sad. And then the driver would say in a sad voice, where are you going? And then the sad person would tell them, the park and then once everyone gets to their destination the driver once again says to 
uh, the designated person that they're there in that emotion. So to the happy person, they'd say, we're in Puerto Rico, have a good day. And then that person would say, thank you. And then get out of, get out of the car. So they would get up from their seat and then get out of the car. Then the angry person, um, the taxi driver would say to the angry person, we're here, we're at the mall. And then the angry person would say, thank you. And then get out of the car. And then the last person, um, the taxi driver would say, we're here at the park. And then the sad person would say, thank you. And then get out. So that's emotional taxi. If you want to play it at home, it's really fun. Okay. So we are going to go through the different emotions and feelings that are in a paper, uh, the paper bag princess. So I'll read the story out loud and then we'll go ahead and talk about the different feelings that are inside of it. Okay. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had expensive princess clothes. She was going to marry a prince named Ronald. So I think that an emotion or feeling in this beginning part is hopeful and happy. So she's a beautiful princess. She lives in um, an, a castle and she's going to marry a prince named Ronald. That sounds like a really happy beginning. Unfortunately, a dragon smashed her castle, burned all her clothes with his fiery breath, and carried off Prince Ronald. What kind of emotion do you think that she'd be feeling at this time? I think that she might be worried. She might be really worried. If I saw my boyfriend get carried off by a big dragon, I would be so worried and so scared. Elizabeth decided to chase the dragon and get Ronald back. At this time, I think she's determined. I think that she's probably scared, but also determined and really actually brave for going to chase that dragon and to get Ronald back. She looked everywhere for something to wear, but the only thing she could find that was not burnt was a paper bag. So she put on the paper bag and followed the dragon. So she's really determined now. He was easy to follow because he left a trail of burnt forests and horse bones. Finally, Elizabeth came to a cave with a large door that had a huge knocker on it. She took hold of the knocker and banged on the door. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, Well, a princess. I love to eat princesses, but I have already eaten a whole castle today. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. So I think that maybe he's tired. He's already eaten a whole castle. Maybe he's full, right? He slammed the door so fast that Elizabeth almost got her nose caught. Maybe she is shocked, um, surprised, shocked or surprised. Elizabeth slammed the knocker and banged on the door or grabbed the knocker and banged on the door again. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, go away. I love to eat princesses, but I have already eaten a whole castle today. I am a very busy dragon and come back tomorrow. So again, I think he's kind of full, maybe tired, not having it, doesn't want to talk to anybody. Uh, wait, shouted Elizabeth, is it true that you are the smartest and fiercest dragon in the whole world? Yes, said the dragon. Is it true that you can burn up to 10 forests with your fiery breath? Oh yes. And that said the dragon, and he took a deep breath and breathed out so much fire, he burnt up 50 forests. Fantastic, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath and breathed out so much fire, he burnt up to 100 forests. Magnificent, said Elizabeth. What do you think that she's, what do you think she's feeling at this time? I can tell you what I'm thinking about her and she sounds smart. <laughs> I am admiring her. She is admirable. Um, burnt a hundred force. Magnificent, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath, but this time nothing came out. So he really was tired. Tired is a feeling and emotion. The dragon didn't even have enough fire to, um, left to cook a meatball. Ooh, he's exhausted. Elizabeth said, Dragon, is it true you can fly around the world in just 10 seconds? Why, yes, said the dragon, and jumped up and flew all the way around the world in just 10 seconds. 
He was very tired when he got back, but Elizabeth shouted, fantastic, do it again. She's smart. So the dragon jumped up and flew around the world in just 20 seconds. When he got back, he was too tired to talk. And he lay down and went straight to sleep. Elizabeth whispered very softly, hey dragon. The dragon didn't move at all. She lifted up the dragon's ear and put her head right inside. She shouted as loud as she could, hey dragon. The dragon was so tired, he didn't move. Elizabeth walked right over the dragon and opened the door to the cave. She's brave. That's how I feel about her right now. There was Prince Ronald. He looked at her and said, Elizabeth, you are a mess. So he's kind of shocked, disgusted. You smell like ashes, your hair is tangled, and you are wearing a dirty old paper bag. Come back when you are dressed like a real princess. I don't like him. Um, Ronald, said Elizabeth, your clothes are really pretty and your hair is neat. You look like a real prince, but you're a bum. They didn't get married after all. I think in the end, she sounds fed up. She sounds um, brave again uh, for standing up to him. Um, and she's insulted, I think. She's insulted by the way that he was talking about her. Um, and she decides not to put up with it. So I think she sounds brave and courageous um, and powerful and proud of all of the work that she did. So I think those are all of the, the feelings and emotions in the paperback princess. If you have any further ones, then feel free to write it down or say it now. All right, now that we've gone over feelings and emotions, let's talk about improvisation. It's kind of a long word, um, but it's really important for drama um, and I think for kind of everyday life and especially as you get older and go through school and do presentations and um, just anything. Basically improvisation means making it up as you go. Um, you know, you don't live your day-to-day -day life with a script and in improvisation you also do not have a script. Um, maybe sometimes someone will tell you you know kind of give you a layout for what you're supposed to be doing um but you largely do not have a script to go off of so improvising means making it up as you go again improvising means making it up as you go and uh, it also goes along with first thought best thought and it's trusting your instincts and trusting that the first thought you have is going to be the best thought that you have and um basically um saying things and going with the ideas that you have without fear and trusting uh your intuition what's in here and what's in here um what you know or what you know from experience and things that you've learned so first thought best thought um in improvis improvisation is really important. So if you were playing an improvisation game um, and someone said to you, okay, now act like an animal, you can't just stand there and go, oh God, okay, um, um, a giraffe, no, that's dumb. Um, I guess I'll go with um, a bird, no, that's stupid. You just have to, you just have to go for it. And so if the first thing you think of is giraffe, then you go and you act like a giraffe and then you just make it work. So that's what improvising is. Um, and we're going to, if we were in class, uh, what we would do is play a couple of games. The first one is called what's in the box. The other one is called yes, let's. So I'll explain what's in the box now and we can do that a little bit now. Um, what's in the box? So we're going to take an imaginary box. I've got it right here. This is an imaginary box. And um, we're going to think off the top of our heads what's in the box. And then I'm gonna pass the box along to you and you'll tell me what's in the box, what else is in the box. So for example, uh, yes, in my imaginary box, I have a, a rabbit. So I'm gonna take the rabbit out. 
Oh, so cute. And then I'll hand it to you. You hold the box and tell me what's in the box. Don't think too much about it. Just look in the box and tell me what's in it. And say, yes, and there's a in the box. What's in the box? Good. Now I'll take the box back. Thank you. Um, yes, and there's a car in the box. Ugh. Whoa. I didn't know Lamborghinis were so small. I'm gonna put that down. Your turn. Mm. Awesome. Okay, I will take the box back now. Thank you. Uh, yes, and there is a giraffe in the box. Oh, cool. Giraffes are really small. Your turn. Cool. I'll take the box back. Thanks. Looks like there's also a remote control in the box. It doesn't work on here. So that's what we'd be doing in, if we were in class. So what we would do is we would go around in a circle and we would all share what's inside the imaginary box. So since we're not in class, it was just you and me. You did a good job. Uh, let's go on to, I'll explain yes, let's. So yes, let's is um, another improv game. So how it works is um, one student uh, would start by suggesting an activity to pantomime. Remember, pantomime is a moving picture. So one student um, would suggest an activity to pantomime. For example, uh, one student might say, let's fly a kite. And then we would all act like we were flying a kite. And then we would go across the room and everybody would say, um, oh, well, the group would say, yes, let's, and then we would all do it. Um, and then I would say, I would raise my hand, um, or you as a student would raise your hand. Everyone takes a turn raising their hands. And we would say, let's play baseball. And then everyone in the class would say, yes, let's. And then we would all act like we're playing a base playing baseball. So you're playing a baseball. Um, so let's try it out now. We'll try it a couple of times. So let's go swimming. Ready? And then you would say, yes, let's. And then we would act like we're swimming. Your turn. I don't know what you're going to say, but you can pan to me. All right, um, let's cook some dinner. I'm gonna taste it. Good. That's how we would play Yes, Let's. I know you don't really get the whole scope of it, but the premise or the idea of it is that we would make these things up at the top of our head and just do it and just act it all out together. So that's yes, let's. Um, improv is really good for being on stage, like I said, in real life, but also on stage because sometimes you might forget a line. Um, that means you have to know your character really well. So you have to be able to come up with some lines off the top of your head if you do end up forgetting some of your lines because some of the best people do. I definitely have. One time I was on stage and I forgot my line and I just uh, looked out and I and then I said some I don't remember what, exactly what I said but I was able to improvise my line and make it up because you just have to you have to keep it going you can't tell the audience that you have forgotten your line you have to just keep going um, it's also really good for staging so when you are practicing your uh, your play when you're rehearsing which we'll get into a little bit later um, it's really helpful for going with your instinct and walking on the stage where you think your character would walk picking things up the way that you think your character would pick things up um, and just trusting um, what you know about your character to make those decisions so that's how improv can be really helpful. Um, 
Okay, and I think that is it for today's lesson. So on the count of three, let's say drama class. One, two, three, drama class.